Well, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Footprints. My name is Mr. Davis. I'm an educator here at Beverly High School. And with me today is Erica Pascarelli. Mrs. Pascarelli is an assistant principal here at Beverly High School. And uh, we're going to get to know who she is uh, as a person. All right. And the very first question I'm going to ask right off the bat is I was reading my notes and I noticed you're one of five kids. Yep. So um, tell me about that. You have how many sisters? I have three sisters and one brother. Okay, three sisters and one brother. So tell me about the dynamic of the house. How was that growing up? Well, I have to tell you that growing up in a large family, um, we're all kind of two years apart. Nothing belonged to you. Everything belonged to everybody. Um, as my older sister, I have an older sister, Monica, and she, of course, got all brand new everything, and I always had hand-me-downs. Um, and then my brother came along, so you can imagine two girls, a boy. Of course he's going to get all brand new clothes. He's a boy. <laughs> of course. And then, um, then of course, my parents had two more children, and they were happened to both be girls. So then the, um, you know, time and change and um, sizes, my uh, sister Elizabeth um, would get brand new clothes. And then, of course, Amy ended up like me with all the hand-me-downs. But. Okay. All right. <laughs> I love it. Um, so you guys are kind of spread out all over the place, kind of like my family, right? I noticed that uh, your sister Monica, you said she lives in Maryland. Maryland, right? yep. Elizabeth lives in Jersey, mm -hmm. right? You have Amy, who lives in Texas. Yes. Right? Um, and you have your brother Joe, who lives in Virginia. So everybody's all spread out every place. Mm -hmm. Like, I, that's pretty cool. Um and so what I noticed, uh, something, you, we have something in common a little bit. So your parents uh, immigrated from the Czech Republic mm -hmm. to the States, kind of like my, my parents that immigrated from Cameroon. Um, what's interesting is, you know, having that in common is, a, is really kind of cool. We found each other through education, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, I noticed uh, uh, another thing. Um, you... Uh, went to, uh, and, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, education is the key. Uh, she has degrees, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and CAGS, which is um, really something to do with administration, because she is in administration. Um, but she went to, what school was it? I went to Gordon College for my bachelor's and then Salem State for my master's and my CAGS. Oh, imagine that. So explain to us a little bit about what CAGS is, because that's kind of an administrative thing, right? Correct. So um, it's called a Certificate of Advanced Graduate Studies, and um, the CAGS offered, is offered through many institutions, but Salem State University is one of them that offers it. And it's basically, if you think about it, it's two and a half years intensive, um, and you it, it, it's postgraduate work. Mm -hmm. But it's not a doctoral. So the net, the, in order to get a doctoral, you would have to do a dissertation. So this is pretty much like all the pre-work of um, except a dissertation. So it's okay. just as much. Um, yeah. So. Excellent. Well, I'll tell you something. That's uh, my brain just exploded right there, ladies and gentlemen, with that one. <laughs> I like it, though. That's good stuff. I, I'm interested is, is to find out. You said you're a career changer. So what really got you into education? What was one of the things that drove you to be into education to begin with? So um, way back when, when I was a, um, a student myself, and it was in seventh grade, I had a teacher. Her name was Dora Pinuloso. Um Dora Pinuloso, um has passed away, actually. I, I recently looked her up to see where she was and what she was doing and to find out she had um, past of cancer. She was a teacher that made a huge difference in my life. And the funny thing is, is that she wasn't necessarily like the most amazing. Um, she taught a lot of different subjects, but one of the subjects she taught was science. And it wasn't like she was passionate and fun and, and like the labs wouldn't always go well. <laughs> like, it just, I mean, middle school people are crazy. Yeah, and she, she just like the way she approached it was kind of like that a scientist would and that hmm. this every day is a class to investigate and to learn. And um, she didn't take it so seriously, but right. the content was still important. So hmm. there was like a nice flow of her understanding middle school. So at that point I was, I thought, you know, when I was at Mullen, I worked at Mullen and advertising agency, mm -hmm. I, I kept thinking like, 
I want to be like Dora. I want to be like Miss P. And actually, oddly enough, at the time, we called her Miss P. Uh-huh. Um, so, <laughs> How great um, is that a nickname? So I it's funny. It. So I ended up getting married, and now you know, kids called me Miss P because they had a hard <laughs> time saying Pascarelli. Yeah, so. Absolutely. So I love it. So 21 years in mm-hmm. in the education field. Yep. I mean, you've seen a lot change yep. in those 21 years, mm-hmm. um, as as far as like good, bad, or indifferent. What are one of what's one of the biggest changes you've seen since you've got into the education game 21 years ago? I think one of the largest changes um, is sort of the vulnerabilities that. We're, we all have to bring to the table as educators and as students and as families, because mm. I think through time and history and um, the push for equity and inclusivity, mm. it requires all people involved to be able to really come to a space from an authentic I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for, but oh, authentic space of like, of being able to speak your truth mm-hmm. and listening to someone else's truth. Yeah. And so I I think when I first started, I think it was we were moving in that direction, especially with a lot of the anti-bullying s- stuff that the schools were trying to put in. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of thought about it. Right. But now I feel like it is more inclusive and, and it's not just a Band-Aid or a, a approach. I think schools and families and communities are working together to say how can we all support each other how can we it's not just tolerance it's about um you know embedding ourselves culturally into who do we want to be in beverly who do we want to be in this world and um that work oh for sure for sure i think it's important to have those conversations um because those conversations get us to a space or a time where we can feel like we're accepted uh, and everybody should be included. And I love the fact that we're actually even talking about that because I think that's the first step in really kind of solving the issue, if there is one. And there is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, There's so, so much work to be done, but absolutely. I'm just happy that we're kind of in a better space instead of defensive or we don't need that. I think people are more willing to say, okay, what's this about? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So uh, I understand you have pets. I do. You have pets. What What are your pets? So I have um, two rescues. We we rescued from Cape Ann Animal Aid, um, for anyone who's been up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we have Biscuit, who's nine, and she is um, a little, you know, fiery 50-pound, 50 50 not 50-year-old, but 50-pound um, <laughs> dog. She's a pain in the butt. That's all right. um, and then Rocky, who's my son. Um, he's my dog's son. <laughs> Since I don't, I don't have a, a son. I only have a daughter. He right. he is my he is my favorite person. <laughs> I, I love it. So you said you have a daughter. How old is your daughter? My daughter is thirteen, about uh, to be fourteen, and wh- she she'll be. Um, she's in eighth grade at Beverly Middle School, and she'll okay. be here at the high school next year. Oh, how about that, huh? Yeah. That's going to be a fun dynamic. Yeah, so right? he's the best. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. Uh, so you have a significant other, and he is? David Pascarelli. David Pascarelli, yeah. and he does? He is a house painter, interior, exterior. Okay, I love that. Yeah. So understanding like our, our, our strengths and weaknesses and being able to go follow those passions is really what's important about footprints. Like, so let me ask you this, as we're talking about footprints, who left an endearing footprint on you other than the teacher that you mentioned earlier in your travels? So I would name multiple if I had the whole day, but I would say early on my first job at Briscoe, um, the principal there, Rhonda Gothier, uh, at the time she was there a year and then retired, she number one, just saw me as an individual and a person and just had this blind belief that I was going to be great. <laughs> and um, and I wasn't. I was a terrible first year teacher. I just had That's no okay. idea what I was doing. That and happens. then um, and then from there, the assistant principal that year, his name was um, George Gonsalves. And mm-hmm. he he's now a principal somewhere probably amazing. Um, but he 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 was funny because he was a former English teacher. So he'd walk into my room and be like, this is how you do it. And, <laughs> and he he was just great. And he was he just the advice he gave me. So, the, the you know, and, the, and then like 
like, I, I mean, there's so many educators, but then when I was at Salem State, um, getting my master's, my professor, Dr. DeFrancis, um, she is still teaching, actually. What's so funny is that um, Nick Tripoli, who's um, works at Beverly Middle School, he's, ta he's going to get his grad master's right now. And Teresa Frantz, uh, Dr. DeFrancis is his teacher, and so I ran into him, and he's like, oh, the hammer. She was just like, <laughs> she she just had this tough this love yeah. that helped influence me as mm. a teacher also about okay. how she, she ran her, the English program at Salem State University. And then when I went into my CAGS, I was so lucky to meet Dr. Ippolito, mm -hmm. um, literally the like somebody who um, I still call on when I need help today. Absolutely. He's just such a wonderful human. So all of these people and so many more, I mean, there are so many other people that um, just made, pushed me or sort of, you know, suggested something. Mm -hmm. um, so so ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, Matt, Erica has been married for 20 years, which is a long time. I've been married for 33, not that I'm trying to beat you or anything. But um, when you find that, person that you can kind of vibe with and be with and have a life to really make a difference and, and push forward and leave footprints on other folks, it's really, really enlightening. And and, and I just love it. Um, I will say this. You do have some hobbies that are very interesting that I like. <laughs> I, I, okay. I like this. The first one I like, um, you play basketball, you said. Mm -hmm. So I'm a basketball junkie. Uh, <laughs> that's what I do. I've been a basketball coach for 30 plus years. I actually work for the Boston Celtics. That's a, the shameless plug. Uh, during the summertime, I actually coach at, at their camps and clinics. Okay. Um, so what got you interested in, in sports and basketball in general? So this goes back to Dora Pinulosa, Mrs. Pinulosa, Pen or Miss P. Um, she said you're going to play basketball and she and I was like I'm I don't, I've never touched a basketball before this was in 7th <laughs> grade and she goes no you're going to play and so she put a basketball in my hand and that was that was it I um she would make me dribble with my left hand she would make me dribble with my right <laughs> hand I'm right-handed mm -hmm. and then all practice because I'm 52 so <laughs> let's just be clear there's only one job I'm going to do is be the point guard <laughs> yeah, that's all right. so I'm not going to be the center forward yes. um so I one of the things she taught me right away is um, just you have to be able to work both sides of the court and people will be able to see your weaknesses mm -hmm. and um, defense is key. Like you could be the littlest person on the court, but if you are, you know, defensive, a defense defense usually beats offense because, you know, if they can't shoot, then you've. You, you win the game basically um, she and then and then on top of that my coach um, at the time her her name was miss um, Frere um, and she's now since married but she she played division one at Monmouth County in New Jersey I went to school in New Jersey and she would run us crazy I mean I would <laughs> I think we'd run five miles and then go into practice oh, right so goodness. that cardio that um, People don't realize in basketball how much cardio it is. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's such a fast-paced game. It is. Um, I was sold from the minute I stepped on a court, to be mm -hmm. really honest with you, that it just made sense to me. I love the plays. I love the excitement. I love the, the, com like the camaraderie with the team. Even people that I didn't necessarily get along with, by the time the season was over, mm -hmm. we were all best friends, and mm -hmm. we could put aside our differences. Yeah. Um, and I tried to make my daughter love basketball, but unfortunately, don't <laughs> don't not. watch this episode, Sylvie. She loves soccer. Um, I did play soccer too, but um, yeah. basketball is my first love. Oh, and yeah, for sure. um, yeah, I coached for Hamilton Wenham one year. Um, that was super fun. That was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but then I became administrator, and I honestly don't know how basketball coaches here in Massachusetts do it or anywhere. <laughs> it is the longest season. It's a pretty long season. Yeah. I gotta tell you, so basketball for me has been in my blood forever. Um, I've enjoyed the game since I was a kid. I mean, I, I gotta say, probably since I was five or six, loved it. Um, and for me, being a basketball coach is so enlightening because it teaches you things about life. Yeah discipline, focus, working together, right? You carry those things over in your life. And for me, it was like seeing a kid improve was one of the greatest joys I've yeah. ever had as a coach, right? Maybe they're not going to get to the NBA, although I did coach a couple of NBA players, I will say that. I'm Michael <laughs> Carter-Williams uh, from Hamilton Wenham. Anyway, um, the game itself, 
is such a enlightening and it's so much fun for 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 kids to really kind of latch on to and it's so much that they can learn from it mm-hmm. um and and about themselves as they're doing it um i'll tell you something i i, I like i'm wondering i like this next thing about you oh, i gosh. do I what do. did i write down <laughs> well you well so i'm looking at my notes and i'm thinking to myself i wonder if her and her husband david do a lot of traveling Right, and then you talked a little bit about a Montreal music festival. Yeah. I was like, I love music, yeah. right? I DJ, yes. that's how much I love music, but it's not like live music. So tell me about that, have you been there before? No, so um, my lovely child wants to go to a musical fe- musical festival, right? So originally for her 14th birthday, which is coming up in June, she said, Mom, can we go to Chicago to Lollapalooza for my birthday? And I, <laughs> I laughed out loud a little bit. Um, we have a couple weddings coming up, and we have some family things going on. So, you know, trying to fit in Chicago. I, I forget what weekend Lollapalooza is. Someone out there probably knows. Mm-hmm. And... Um, my husband said, well, let me do some, let's see if there's some festivals here on the, in the Northeast that we could go to. Um, so I, there's like the River Fest, I think. No, Boston Calling. Boston Call. So yeah, yeah. so we Boston do. We are going Boston Calling. I think that's Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. Um, we're going one night. I think the Punk Night. I don't know. I'm not sure. But whatever <laughs> night we're going, we're going. Yep. And then, um, so... My husband has done all of the planning. Um, I just know that we have tickets to go to Montreal. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on an island. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what day we're going because there's different <laughs> themes every day. Yeah. But I think SZA is playing wow. that day. So it, it's like How a full lineup. So um, so Montreal, I've never been to Montreal. We've been to Quebec. So Quebec was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now we're going to hit up Montreal and maybe either go... Uh, south to the Niagara Falls on the way back or north to Quebec on the way back. We, we haven't decided yet. but I like it. Yeah. I like it. So yeah. going to a music festival, that sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, I've been to my share of concerts back in the day. I actually worked for a bunch of radio stations, KISS 108, Jam 94.5, all those stations that you hear now. Um, back in the day, I worked for them. We used to give away concert tickets and all that, and that was a lot of fun. And ironically enough, this is true. This is not Cap. My wife and I were at the same concert. It was, uh, it was uh, Ice Ice Baby, which is that guy. Who was that guy? Uh, it was En Vogue. Millie Vanilli. And, uh, uh, it yeah. was it, it was all of them. It was yeah. it was um, it, uh, Hammer MC Hammer. He yeah. was in there. So yeah. I was at that concert. And we were giving backstage passes to all those people. And my wife was actually I never met her, but she was in that at that concert because she's like. Don't you remember that concert? The the girl from En Vogue broke her leg. She had a cast on. I'm like, you were at that concert? I said, I was backstage. So <laughs> imagine that, right? It was <laughs> destiny. Destiny. It was going to happen. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about the biggest challenges you face in your role and how do you sort of address them yeah. as an assistant principal? I think, I think the biggest thing is... Um, looking at the center of your work. So for me, my center of my work is um, goes back to students mm-hmm. and teachers, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so students and teachers and, and families too are in there too and they're just as important. But for me, it's when I'm, the biggest challenge is, is making sure all parties feel heard, mm-hmm. feel supported, and then understand what, you know, for students, what the expectation is mm-hmm. and how, to move forward from that so one mistake doesn't define you or um the choices that we make yes at that moment are defining but Mm -hmm. aren't necessarily going to be the thing that holds us back we have to find the bridge to move us over and then working with teachers to you know help build that bridge and like in their comfort zone and what what especially if the harm has been done in their classroom Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but the I, i think the work of being an administrator today is is really about ground like for me it's about grounding myself and my core beliefs and that everyone belongs so like one thing i'll always say is like there is a place for everyone at the table we all belong no question and those people who don't feel that way then really i mean i don't want to be mean but you just have to shut that down because If we're not coming to the table as we all belong, and Mm. that's the intention, the intention is we all belong, we have to Mm -hmm. find a way to like compromise and move forward, um, then you're not going to, right? Right. So um, 
with any compromise, no one gets what they want. I mean, that's why it's a compromise. Exactly. And so it's it's being able to set that up, facilitate that space and give people time to, you know, OK, I can live with that. I right. can move forward that way and being consistent. And, oh, you know, question. so. I hope well, I answered their question. No, but. no, absolutely. So one of the biggest things that I always say to my players and my students is you can't expect to see change if you never do anything differently. Okay. And one of the biggest things you got to do is recognize sometimes you might be at fault in a certain situation and own it. Because a lot of times people don't do that yeah. enough. Yep. And then you got to be empathetic, right? You got to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And a lot of times kids can't do that. I mean, sometimes I have a hard time doing it. I got to be honest, we're human. But at the end of the day, that's probably the most important aspect of, of understanding someone else's journey is putting yourself in that in that position For sure. and seeing how they're dealing with it, right, and how they deal with certain situations. And hopefully you can help them through that, right? Which leads me to my next question. As you were sort of um, – how do you kind of approach supporting students uh, who are facing maybe – maybe academic or behavioral issues or maybe some racial type issues. How do you how do you deal with that? That's a tough one. Yeah, I think number one, I first of all I agree one hundred percent with you. I think we have to name we have we can't be afraid to name it. So hmm. I think number one is being able to put words behind what's happening. Hmm. And for some students I think that's really difficult for them is to be able to um, name it or identify it. And then from there, finding the resources and structures. I'm one person, right? So, mm -hmm. and and the way I might approach it might not be the right way, right? So like, I have to seek others around me to say, how do we support this? You know, I always say we need to build a bridge mm -hmm. and all then after you build the bridge, walk over oh, it for sure. and then you might need another bridge, yeah. right? Like yeah. it, it's Absolutely. not, it's not, there's no arriving in life. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that I would say for myself. And I said it today the other, or the other day at work, I said, you never arrive. You never just say, oh, I, I'm done today. I'm done. Yeah. I've done, I've did, I've done it. Like I've, right. I've, I'm, I'm going to just check out now. Like there's in life and in any job or in anything that's worth doing, hmm. I feel like there's always a little bit more you can do or Absolutely. a little bit reflection. Hmm, look in a mirror. Did, could I have handled that better? And and so, right, so for Definitely. me, that's sort of how I approach it with students is if they can't admit, you know, what is going on or if they can't name it, I say, okay, look in the mirror and what is it that you see mm -hmm. and name that right. and then let's walk from there. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think the biggest thing is they got to own it. Like I said, and a lot of times students don't want to do that. They don't want to own their part of it. They're like, ah, it's not me. It's it's him or her. No, it's you. You got to own your part of it. And as you own it, now you can kind of say, you know what? I did that, and yeah, all right, all right. Now I see. I need to really take a step back, and and I can figure out exactly where I'm going to go with this, right? And I think a lot of students don't really do that. They don't self-analyze enough. Right. And and it's good. Some I, one student said to me, well, I like to be alone, Mr. Davis. I said, well, that's good and bad. I mean, it's good that you like to be alone because, yeah, some everybody needs alone time. Mm -hmm. But it's bad because if you have something bottled up in you, right, that you need to get out, you don't have anybody to really share that with. Yeah. Right. So I think that that's really the most important aspect of being educators. Right. And having those footprints being push forward and, and helping someone get over that hurdle that they need to get over. Yeah. I think that's really important. Um, school culture is really, really big um, here at Beverly High School. I love it. But um, how is it that you would sort of foster a positive school culture in terms of teachers and staff and stuff like that? How would you do that through your lens, your eyes? I have to catch myself all the time. So I am, I've been accused in a good way of sometimes being so toxic, toxically positive <laughs> that I have to like. That sounds familiar. Yeah. So I try to like tone it down a little bit because yeah. I never want to seem like I'm not authentic. Right. But I do think you, you walk the walk that you want to see, right? So mm -hmm. for me, it's um, a gentle smile, a hello, you know, whatever I need to do. But I think that is, you know, you try to find 
the hope, the positive, the good in any situation mm-hmm. to get you to the next point. Oh, and yeah. and so for me about culture is be like it's so cheesy, but being the change you want to see is what do I want to see from others? Make mm-hmm. sure I'm modeling that. And okay. and and, yeah. and if people like say, oh, you look like you're having a tough day reflect uh oh how am i per- being perceived and mm-hmm. how can i be real and authentic but also be like i'm not it's not doom and gloom right, right like right. we need each other to get through For and sure. so how do i how do i do that right so, so now uh that's that's really good so the next question is and this is something i was thinking about um before we got on the air how do you kind of envision your role as an assistant principal sort of involving in the coming years, how's it? How's it? Where's it going? Where's it evolving to? So I think the beautiful thing about working with um, children and um, community, this community in general, is it never stays the same. Mm. And children, every year, it's like an authentic group of kids walk in. Yes, they all might be 14, 15 years old, but you never know what you're going to get. It's yeah. not apples to apples. And so... Box of chocolates. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get. Um, so I think for me in this role and for this job, it's what's great about it is that there's no such thing as a groundhog day. You never wake up mm. and repeat. Um, you, you can never rinse and repeat for anything, no, even if it's discipline or consequences or anything, because every student is is a unique human being. Um, and so the growth I see for myself is um, building... Be- stronger relationships with the staff members, Mm -hmm. um, showing them who I am as a human and working hard for the kids and the Mm -hmm. students and the parents here in Beverly. Absolutely. I love it. Very well said, Erica. I'm going to leave you with this question. So, um, so for those people who are considering a career in education, uh, or maybe even school administration, what, what advice would you give them? Uh, what would you offer them? What would you think would be some advice that you know, I'm walking in the door and I want to do this, that you do, do the same thing you do. If you are considering a job working as um, a public school employee in any way, shape or form, it is truly a job of service. Um, And it's something that I I look at is that I'm here to serve this community in this, in the capacity right now as an assistant principal and, and to understand what the, you know, to understand what it is that you want to give back, know your why. So it's like for me, why why do I want to do this work? It's because I want every student to feel like they belong. Mm-hmm. I want there to be um, every teacher to feel like they belong. Mm-hmm. I want you know families to feel like this is a place where they they that's theirs, their right. community. Um, so if you're somebody looking into working, just know that it's it's a ton of work and it's the most fulfilling work that I've done as a human being. Yeah, for sure. The lives that I get to see grow and the students I get to see from year to year to year um, has made a difference in my life and keeps me passionate about this work every day. Absolutely. So very well said, Erica, very well said. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, uh, this has been very enlightening for me and uh, fun. We found out she's one of five Kids, we found out she has two pets, rescue dogs, married for 20 years, and also in education for 21 years. This has been so much fun, Erica. I appreciate you really doing this. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, next week my guests will be, ooh, wait, it's going to be fun. Um, I appreciate you doing this. Uh, Don't forget to tune in um, to our Channel 22 where this is posted. Also, SoundCloud. Uh, You can go there and uh, check us out. And uh, Footprints, ladies and gentlemen, is something that we all leave on each other. So let's make sure we leave a good one. All right. And that's what it's about. Leaving good footprints. Thank you. Appreciate you. See you next time. Bye bye.